Hey everyone and welcome back to Joey's Retro Handhelds. I'm Joey and today I'm going to show you the ultimate setup guide for Daijisho. For those that have only seen the name and have no idea what it is, Daijisho is a front-end launcher for all your favorite retro games on Android. This means you can tell Daijisho what folders your games are in, what emulators you have installed, and it'll connect them so that you can launch them right from Daijisho with cool themes, artwork, videos, and more. Think of it like the interface you see when you boot up a Switch, a PS5, or even an Xbox. Same idea. We're going to set all this up, I'll show you some cool settings and tricks you can do, and hopefully make your life easier for using Daijisho as a front end. One thing that I do want to point out, especially if you're coming from using Linux handhelds with Emulation Station and others, Daijisho doesn't actually change the settings in any emulators. So any changes we make in Daijisho doesn't actually affect the games. They're separate instances and Daijisho is only a front end with pretty pictures and easy navigation to get to all of your games. Just ahead of all of that, if you're going to be following along, I suggest having your emulators already installed and some games somewhere on your device. You can always do that part later if you want and just watch the video to see how it all looks, but those would be the two things I'd say you need before starting this guide. I'm in the middle of making an Android emulator setup guide as well at some point in the near future, so keep an eye out for that as well. If you're stuck today on where do you actually get the ROMs to play these games, check out my Retro ROMs video as that'll help you out as a beginner. Let's jump in. The first thing you need to do is head to the Google Play Store and search for Daijisho by Tapioca Fox and install it. Open it and when it's done downloading, just wait for the loading screen to finish and you'll be greeted with a screen that says welcome and a button to download platforms. All that means is that Daijisho wants us to tell it what platforms we want it to show. So what do we have games for? Let's click download platforms and now we have a long list of platforms. To make this super simple since every single one of these platforms is the same, I'm just going to choose two for now as I want to show you how to get back here after to add more, but feel free to select as many as you want and then click import. I chose Game Boy Advance and Super Nintendo. And you can see here that we get a nifty looking background graphic. It says GBA and SNES at the bottom, and we get some new buttons to work with. If I were to add even more platforms, you'd see them all at the bottom. So GBA, GB, GBC, SNES, and so on. But let's start with GBA. So we've told Daijisho that, hey, we have Game Boy Advance games. Now let's tell it where. Click Paths, and then you want to click the Add More button, and navigate to the folder that has all your GBA ROMs inside. I have them on the SD card of the Logitech G Cloud here in a ROMs folder, but you could have them anywhere. I would suggest that whatever folder you choose, that you have your ROMs in a subfolder and that the ROMs are just right there in the folder you pick. Click sync after you've picked your folder and now Daijisho will scrape your ROMs to get artwork, videos, and all that fun stuff. Back on the main platform page and let's talk about the other options here. The random button will choose a random game in that platform for you to play. But let's head to the library button and this will be where you can see all your games, artwork, media and data. On the right you can see some buttons, you can choose play, add as a favorite, detail will bring up more information about the game and grid view will make the list a grid instead of a list. Lastly, you have edit item, and that's if you want to change the title or any information you want about the game. This is also the area where you can help Daijisho scrape artwork if it can't find it. You might have to play around with some of your game titles to get Daijisho to find the right game, or you can turn on aggressive scraping, which I'll show in a bit.
but sometimes it just won't find it. And in that case, you can add your own media if you'd like. Let's click detail. A video of the game likely started playing in the background and you can scroll down and see some details about the game and even retro achievement information if you're logged in. Let's back out to the main platform menu. There's one major thing I want to point out as it's 99% of the issues I see with Daijisho and usually what trips people up. Most people at this point will just go launch a game and you're going to get an error about killing package processes, which we'll fix in a bit. But if you click confirm, you're going to get a black screen most likely. What in the world? What is this? Why is it happening? Well, we told IG Show what platform we have. We told it where those games are, but we didn't tell it what emulator to use to play them. So Daijisho was just like, I, I don't know, let me pick a random one. So let's fix that. And let me be really clear here, you have to do this for every single platform that you add. Don't skip this part, or none of your games are going to launch. On the main platform page, click the pencil icon, and now we can edit information about the platform. You could also delete the platform here as well. But what we want to do is scroll down to player settings, and you can see under default player, Daijisho picked a random core for RetroArch for Game Boy Advance games, and it's not the one that I have installed. So if we click the little arrow, we get a full list of any platforms you have installed in Daijisho that you can just scroll through. So I have only GBA and SNES installed right now, so it's only showing me GBA and SNES emulators and cores that it supports. But if you had a bunch of emulators at the start, you'll see them all. Now, just ignore the number at the start. You want to find the platform, so GBA, then the emulator, and in my case, I know it's RetroArch 64 that's installed. And then you head to that section, and now I know for GBA games, I'm using the MGBA core. So I'm going to choose that. Now, I might have lost a few of you at this point. So if you're confused as to what emulator and core to choose for what platform, that's really your choice and part of the setup of Android emulators. But that's why I suggested to have everything set up ahead of time before starting this process as that's a bit outside of the scope of this particular guide. But what I can do is leave a general list of emulators and platforms at the end of this video that can help you out. So at least you have something in mind to reference if you want to install these emulators until I finish my Android setup guide. Now let's click save. Let's head back to a game and now let's try loading it. Confirm the process killing and look, the game works and loads perfectly. So just keep all of this in mind. If your game isn't loading or loading to a black screen from Daijisho, nine times out of 10, you have the wrong core or emulator selected. Let's get back to Daijisho and now let's check out some other things. Head to the settings tab and since Daijisho is a front end and something that you want to boot into when starting a device, you can access Android settings from here as well and Daijisho settings. So right now we want Daijishos, so head to library. You can see here we have the option to download platforms, which is where you can add more if you'd like. You can also sync entirely to sync your entire library to get artwork, details, and all of that if you've added any new ROMs or platforms. You can also clear items that no longer exist, remove some items. Honestly, you can read the descriptions to see if it's things you want to do, but let's just go to the settings that I usually adjust and care about. The first is I want to clear all disjointed items on sync. I'm basically telling Daijisho that, hey, if I delete a game in a folder, remove it from your list. Aggressive scraping is something I'd only enable if you're having trouble getting artwork for some games that maybe Daijisho can't find. We want to disable player warnings as well, which was that warning that we kept seeing about killing processes. Don't worry, it doesn't hurt anything, just enable this, trust me. I like having the sync icon show at the top, 
So I'm going to click that as well, and it just gives me a quick way to sync my library, and I leave the rest alone. Head to the appearance section, and now let's fix this white mode as it's hurting my eyes. Click dark theme and enable dark, and you can enable pure dark theme too if you want. But here at the top, there's a wallpaper pack, and this is basically like themes. Remember the wallpaper that shows for GBA and SNES? Well, there's community-made wallpapers for all Daijisho systems, so you can scroll through and pick one. There isn't a good way to see this in Daijisho right now, so I'll link a website where you can compare them all and choose the theme you want to use. Either way, it's as easy as selecting one of them, click download pack, confirm to replace existing, and if you head to your platforms now, you'll see some cool new wallpapers. Back to appearance, and I don't really touch anything else in this section, but feel free to scroll through and see if there's anything else you want to change. Back out again and head to navigation now, and you can customize what you want your homepage to be, so what Daijisho loads into. I usually leave this as widgets personally, which we'll talk about later. I don't really touch any of the other settings here, so we can move on to video and sounds. So remember earlier, I said that Daijisho will scrape media and it will also include a video, which we saw on the details page. Now for me, I don't really care for videos, so I'm going to disable that and I'm going to disable the sounds as well. Back out and we head to retro achievements. If you have retro achievements, log in. Or if you don't, head to retroachievements.org and learn more. Basically, it's achievements for retro games, so it's awesome. And I'll show you why this matters in a bit. But the last setting we want to look at is Backup and Restore, which will back up your settings or restore them, and it uses Google Drive to do so. I usually enable this, but it's up to you. Let's head back to the Platforms tab, and I'm going to head to Detail again, and it may take some time to update on your end, but I'm going to use the power of time travel here, and we can now see that Retro Achievements information has loaded. It shows you how many you've completed in that game, the percentage, and even a rating of them. Okay, now let's talk about the Widgets tab, and this is usually where I spend most of my time. Widgets are basically shortcuts to different games and other things in Daijisho, kind of like collections. So let's start easy with the Retro Achievements one. Click New Widget top right, then Retro Achievements, and now we have a cool widget that we can just click into. You'll see a list of games you've earned Retro Achievements in, and you can even click into them to see more about specific achievements. So it's pretty handy. Let's try some more. This time click Activity, and you can see a few options for Activity Widgets. I want Continue Play, which will let me quickly continue the last game I was playing. Head back, and I also want items played in the period grid, which shows me recent games played. For any new widgets I add, I can push and hold on them, to move them or remove them. And so you can add whatever widgets you want. The random game one is pretty cool. But I also like to add pin and play to pin my favorite games to play right here. Customize them however you like. The last thing I want to show is the Apps tab. If we head there, you can see all your installed apps in Android, and you can launch anything from here. Remember, this is a front end, so you can use Daijisho as your home app to do anything in Android, and I'll show you how we set it as a home app in a minute. But here, we can customize this further. If this is a gaming-only device, Click on All Apps to the right to filter to only games or back to all apps. 
If you push and hold on an icon, you can also flag it as a game to show up in that filter. Otherwise, you can sort by alphabetical, reverse, and recent. Customize this as much as you like, you have a lot of options. And now, as promised, if you're like me and you installed Daijisho on a dedicated gaming handheld, you would want the device to boot right into Daijisho from startup, and also to get right back into Daijisho after any games or apps. So let's head to Settings, System Settings, and now this will be different for all Android devices. But you generally want to head to Apps or Applications or something along those lines, and in there, you should see something like default apps. If you go into that, you should see home app. And if you click that, you can now change your home app to Daijisho and you're done. That's all there is to Daijisho and all I can really teach you. I'm going to leave that list of emulators I recommended for Android up now so you can pause and save this if you'd like. As far as issues with Daijisho goes, there's a few emulators that won't work or have small issues. This information might become out of date in the future, so just a heads up, but right now, Citra Official does not work with Daijisho, but Citra MMJ does, and those are both Nintendo 3DS emulators. AetherSX2's newest Play Store build also doesn't work, but the recommended 668 version does, and that's a PS2 emulator. Both DuckStation, which is a PS1 emulator, and AetherSX2 will not load to your save state from Daijisho automatically, even if you have those settings checked in the emulator. Dolphin MMJR, which is a GameCube and Wii emulator, won't show save states either, but will if you don't use Daijisho to launch it. And lastly, Yavasan Shiro, which is a Saturn emulator, has issues as well. This all might sound like a lot, but it really isn't a big deal. Retroarch as a whole works great, and most other emulators do as well. It's just some tiny issues that hopefully will get fixed in the future. That's going to be it for this one. Share in the comments below your favorite Daijisho wallpaper pack, and let's see if we can help people make some decisions on it. Please don't forget to like and sub to help the channel grow, and hope you all have a good one.